Come on, little Jethro. Drink it up. No sassafras, no snakewort, no pecoon root, nor retchweed. How do folks live in these Beverly Hills without the necessities of life? Look <laughs> up, Danny. Ellie May Clampett. Did you drag home another pussy cat? No, but this year's a special one. I've been helping the critter doctor over to the zoo, and he let me bring this here one home because its ma was being mean to it. Husky little critter. Ought to be a good mouse catcher when he gets growed. You can't keep him that long. Why, the critter doctor said he gets to be eight or ten feet long. He's a lion. He sure is. Even a bobcat. Don't get that mean. <laughs> Any luck? Ah, uh, there ain't nothing to shoot up in these hills. A few scrawny squirrels and rabbits, that ain't worth a cartridge. Ah, right, dingies, let's all go home where I can find some yarbs and you can find some game. Yeah. Ma's been wanting to go back and see Jeff Ring. Hey, let's all go together. You bring the truck around, Jethro, and I'll pack a lunch and we can get started. Ah, hold on just a minute. That may be all right for Pearl, but that's a mighty long trip to take just to hunt yarbs and do a little shooting. Besides, you got school, Jethro. And I can't go and leave little Jethro. Hey, look at yonder. This here's a lion. And you named him after Jethro. Yeah, because he's king of the beast, aren't he? Ah, because he eats so much and his feet's so big. <laughs> your feet ain't big. What you talking about, boy? When you was 12, your feet were so big, you used to have to go down to the crossroads to turn around. <laughs> Come on, everybody, let's go home, where we can find some yards and get some fresh game meat. I'll get the truck. Ah, hold on. Oh, Uncle Jed, if we don't do us some shooting, we ain't gonna be able to bark a squirrel out of a tall tree at 300 yards. I know, we's getting a mite rusty. I'll tell you what, you grab a handful of matches, we'll stick them in the ground alongside that wall out front, we sit on the porch, and we'll take turns lighting them with our rifles. Oh, shucks. But that ain't shooting. Well, that wall ain't no more than two or 300 feet from the porch. I know it ain't real shooting. I tell you what, we won't take that aim, we'll snap shoot him. Why don't y'all shoot skates like Mr. Drivedale? What skates? Uh, he told me about them, them clay birds. Well, if you two go to shooting clay birds, don't expect me to cook them. <laughs> Any statement about tomorrow's match, gentlemen? Yes. Oh, well, now, I'll tell you. If you please. I should like to read Mr. Drysdale's prepared statement. Mm -mm. Win or lose, may the spirit of fair play and good sportsmanship, which so symbolizes the Commerce Bank, the friendly bank of Beverly Hills, prevail in this great competition. Oh, baloney. I'll give you a statement. My bank's going to shoot the pants off of his bank and win this trophy back permanently. I shall begin again. <laughs> win or lose, may the spirit of fair play and good oh, sportsmanship, which so... Now, listen, Hatter. Your bank hasn't won in two years. Not since Lynn Cranell became my vice president and teammate. And furthermore, the next... I've got a little surprise for you this year, Drysdale. I've got a new cashier that can outshoot Davy Crockett. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to go some to outshoot Hawkeye Crandall. You said it. Why, Hawkeye Crandall could pick Crandall my Aunt Nellie. <laughs> when you see Gene Sandbloom handle one of these things... Don't wave that in my face, Hatter. <laughs> Chief... Chief, it's Vice President Crandall calling from the hospital. Hospital? Hawkeye? Yes, he was crossing the street and he didn't see a fire truck coming. <laughs> Hawkeye, how bad are you hurt? Both legs broken, right arm, three ribs. Well, we got until tomorrow morning, try to make it. <laughs> what else can happen to me today? The skeet championship out the window, and now those crazy clampets are shooting at passing cars. Surely your wife's exaggerating, Chief. The clampets wouldn't do anything that foolhardy. No? Well, just in case they would. Isn't that their driveway up ahead? Yes. Let me know when we're safely in. <laughs> Up against the front wall there, just to the right of the gate. <laughs> you mean to tell me you shoot flies sitting on that wall out there? Mm, no, that wouldn't be sporting. We'd get him on the wing. <laughs> Possible. Oh, no, it ain't, Mr. Drysdale. 
Oh, we just smear a little sorghum on the wall and get them when they buzz in for a landing. <laughs> the trick is not to get a bee. You shoot a bee, you miss your turn. <laughs> when they come in fast out of the sun, it's hard to tell them apart. I can't even see the sorghum. Neither can I. Oh, Uncle Jet ain't missed one yet. Well, back home, they called him Hawkeye. Did you say Hawkeye? Oh, you know how folks hang a nickname on you. Miss Hathaway, the trophy may not be lost. The chief, he has to be an employee of the bank. Meet Mr. J.D. Clampett, my new vice president. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Hawkeye. <laughs> Will you stop worrying? Jed Clampett is a vice president in name only. He won't come near the bank. Uh, how can you be sure? Because I told Jethro to take him out to the skeet club. I'll meet him there, and we'll practice for the rest of the afternoon. And the skeet match is tomorrow morning, and this beauty will be mine, mine, mine. Chief, haven't you heard the expression, it's not that you win or lose, but how you played the game? Oh, yes, I've heard it. And I consider it one of the most ridiculous statements ever made. <laughs> Suppose Hacker hears about your new teammate and comes around to meet him? Say, that is a good thought. All right, have a nameplate made, put it on Crandall's desk. J.D. Clampett, Vice President. Then alert everyone to say he's out for the balance of the day. Mr. Drysdale, I have always been a loyal secretary. But there are some things my conscience will not permit me to do. And break in a new secretary. That is one of them. <laughs> Come on, Jethro, it's time I was getting down to the bank. Jed. What is all this nonsense about you working for Mr. Drysdale? You don't know nothing about banking. Well, that's what I said, Granny. You know what he said? What? He said, Mr. Clampett, you are the kind of man I need for vice president because you are a straight shooter. <laughs> yeah. I reckon there's always need of a good, honest man. <laughs> Especially in the banking business. Come on, Jethro. <laughs> Uncle Jed, Mr. Drysdale said I was to take you out to the skeet shooting range. He said, you don't have to come to the bank today. Yeah, I know, Jethro. I reckon he's just trying to be nice. Because with his other vice president in the hospital, I don't see what help I could be to him shooting skeet. <laughs> oh, shucks. I was counting on shooting some of them clay birds. Well, go right ahead, Jethro. And take him off. She'd like to go. Pearl don't care nothing about shooting. But I sure would like to get my old double barrel unlimbered. It's getting rusty. And so am I. Well, fine, Granny. And Ellie Mae can go, too, if she wants. Just drop me off at the bank on the way. Is this satisfactory, Mr. Drysdale? <laughs> oh, fine, fine. Put it on Crandall's desk back in the corner. Mr. Hacker is back to see you, and the chairman of the rules committee is with him. I think they expect you to default the contest. Ha, 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 ha. Just when I've got it won. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, at the risk of incurring your disapproval, I owe it to my conscience to make the following statement, which I have typed out for your perusal. Honesty and integrity are the very cornerstones of the great institution of banking. And they are strengthened by the motor of fair and democratic competition. This trophy is symbolic of that competition. It represents a glittering ideal. And I say to you, better defeat with honor than victory at the cost of a tarnished ideal. Here, here, Mr. Drysdale. You are a credit to the entire banking profession. That is one of the most inspired statements that I have ever heard. And Hacker here thought that you'd default or ask for postponement merely because you'd lost your teammate. <laughs> Hacker, read those words over and over. By George, they mean something. Yeah, they mean he's found a crack shot. Just. May I, may I have a copy of this? Well, certainly, Mr. Pendleton. <laughs> Mr. Harris, it may interest you to know that the employee I have chosen to be my teammate has never in his entire life shot one single solitary clay bird. Oh. Bravo, bravo, what sportsmanship, what courage, what spirit. What's his name? <laughs> J.D. Clampett, vice president? What does the vice president do, Paul? Yeah, I just ain't exactly sure, Ellie Mae. That's the reason I want to talk to Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> uh, he might be out at the ski place waiting for you. Well, we'll see. Yeah, you sure it's all right for us to go on out there without you, Jed? Yeah, Mr. Drysdale says as long as I work at the bank, you can all use a ski club. Club? 
I thought you busted them things up with a gun. Oh, you do, Granny. But that's just what they call a skeet shooting place. Pull up in front of the bank, Jethro, and wait for me. I'll go and see if Mr. Drysdale's there. I'd like to meet this vice president. Well, he hasn't gotten to his desk yet. New man, just getting settled in. Mm. But you've picked him to shoot with you, huh? Well, as long as he's filling in for Crandall here at the bank, I figured the sporting thing would be to let him fill in at the skeet match. <laughs> you say he's never shot skeet. My word of honor, this man has never set foot upon a skeet field. <laughs> Come in. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Drysdale. I was oh, just Mr. wondering Clark, if... Uh, come in, come in. Well, I, I don't want to butt in. Oh, it's perfectly all right. These gentlemen were just leaving. Business. <laughs> oh, pleasure, gentlemen. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. See you in the morning, gentlemen. <laughs> there is the mark of true greatness, Hacker. Did you see the way he treated that seedy old tramp? Like he was a millionaire. <laughs> This is Crandall's skeet jacket. I don't know whether it'll fit you or not. It's a mite snug, but I reckon it'll do. You'd think bankers could afford new coats instead of covering them old ones with patches. <laughs> these are the targets we shoot at. Hey, ain't them dandy little dishes. Just right for saucer and coffee. Why in carnation do you want to shoot at a saucer like this? If you ain't careful, you'll bust them. We're about to the cup. <laughs> well, there aren't any cups. See, you done busted them, didn't you? No, no, Granny, we don't use cops, just these saucers. I, I mean, these targets. The object of the game is to hit them as they fly through the air. Ah, I reckon I'd like to try that. Give me a gun, Jethro. I'll handle the release switch, Chief. <laughs> All right, if I try it without this little coat. Oh, yes, Mr. Kravitz. But I wouldn't suggest you trying it with the rifle, because when you yell pull, those targets are going to shoot out there at 60 miles an hour. Pull! Shattered it! Sorry about that. I just meant to nick it so you could use it again. Well, Jed, from the looks of all them broken dishes out there, you ain't the first one that made a mistake. No, Granny, you don't understand. You see, the object of the game is to break the target. But to do it with a rifle is absolutely remarkable. Oh, shucks, that ain't nothing. A lot easier than shooting flies. <laughs> Can I try? Yes, of course, but I, I think you better use the shotgun. Oh, well, this here is Granny's. This here is the gun I'm used to. Leader of my Jethro. Okay, Uncle Jed. Pull! 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 Fantastic feat. Yeah, they's big, all right, but they help him to stand steady. Step aside, Jethro, and give me a whack at busting them things. Can you fling two at once? Well, yes, but fling! <laughs> fling two more, I got another barrel in. I have never seen such marksmanship. Why, with any one of you as my teammate, I can win tomorrow. I'll shoot with you, Mr. Drysdale. I'll shoot with you, Mr. Drysdale. Well, thank you. But, you see, my teammate has to be someone who works at the bank. And since Mr. Clavett here just happens to be my vice president... It sure was a stroke of luck for me to get that job just in time to shoot with you. Almost as though it were planned. Oily <laughs> May, wouldn't you like to try to hit one of the targets? Sure would. Ah, which gun would you like to use? Don't want no gun. Billy me, don't much cotton to fire on. Tell, tell me, she's going to try to hit top. Pull! But, Mr. Hacker, Mr. Clampett is out. I can see that. I'll just sit down here and wait for him. Sooner or later, even vice presidents have to show up for work. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking. With Mr. Drysdale and Miss Jean both gone, maybe they need me over to the bank. Should I drop you off there? Yeah, I reckon you better. Here, yeah, Pearl knows how much to let this out for me. Yeah, I figure if I'm gonna be any help to Mr. Drysdale, I better get at it. <laughs> Clampett. Joram. Jed Clampett. Vice President of this bank. 
That's what they tell me. You know, I just had a hunch to come in. I figured there might be something I could do to help. I think there's a world of things you can do to help me, Mr. Clampett. Well, that's just dandy. I don't believe I caught your name. Hacker. William Hacker. You call me Bill. Well, howdy there, Bill. It sure is nice to make your acquaintance. <laughs> sit down, sit down. What can I do for you? Well, to start off with, you can tell me how long you've been in the banking business. Well, uh, this here is my first day. <laughs> Vice President? Well, that's the job I'm commencing with. And I want to tell you that Mr. Drysdale is as fine a man as you ever want to work for. Why, he ain't done nothing all day but shoot skeet. I see. <laughs> tell me, do you shoot good skeet? Well, I never tried for it today. Of course, it don't take much shooting to bust them great big saucers, especially if you got a good rifle. You shoot skeet with a rifle? <laughs> Well, I admit it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. My daughter Ellie Mae does just as good with her slang shot. That's very interesting. How did, uh, how did Mr. Drysdale happen to find you? Oh, uh, we his next door neighbors. Your next door neighbor of Milburn, Drysdale? Up there, those exclusive estates? Yep. Matter of fact, he got the place from me. You see, I, uh, come into a little money here a while back. 25 or 30 million. Dollars. And to show you what kind of a friend Mr. Drysdale is, he's keeping all that money right here in his bank, and he ain't charging me one penny to do it. He's all heart, that fellow. All heart. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clampett, how does it happen that you're vice president of this bank here? Well, my nephew Jethro and me, was out from the house, that's my cousin Pearl's boy. He was out there in front of the house shooting flies off the wall. At Excuse the me, wall. shooting flies? Yes, sir. With rifles? Yes, sir. How far away? Oh, it was no more than a couple hundred feet. Oh, yes, sir. Can you win a round of skeet, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can you win a round of skeet, Billy Hacker? <laughs> no, I cannot win a round from that new teammate you found. He's a crack shot and cannot miss the target. <laughs> I'd like to point out it is not too late to do the decent thing. Now, the bank's still open. Select an employee at random. Take me. <laughs> we lose, but we will lose with honor. Is the trophy mine for keeps, Billy boy? <laughs> And he says, well, say, speaking of Mr. Drysdale, here he comes. Mr. Clampett, what are you doing here? Where should a vice president be? Out shooting flies over his front wall? Back are you, Sloop. Get out of my bank. Not until we first have a little meeting with Mr. Pendleton. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I am shocked, to say the least. Shocked and disillusioned. I apologize, Mr. Pendleton. My desire to win momentarily overcame my sense of fair play. But I have a suggestion. Suppose I select at random an employee to be my teammate. Well, that seems sporting, eh, Hacker? Yeah, I'll buy that. Well, I have a new young janitor, not a very bright kid, but nice. Jethro Bodine. <laughs> Just a minute, Drysdale. Isn't he Clampett's nephew, the one he shoots flies off the wall with? Well, Drysdale, is this true? <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is true. Miss Hathaway, I believe you're on overtime. <laughs> right, Chief. Good night, gentlemen. Now, I have a suggestion for you. I'll pick an employee of yours at random to be your teammate. I consider that eminently fair. Agreed, Drysdale? <laughs> You mean to say that Pearl let this out and now he ain't a gonna shoot? I'm afraid Mr. Clampett is no longer employed here, ma'am. Uh, I declare, look, look at the dust on that desk. Jed Clampett was taught to leave things clean. Fetch me a broom. <laughs> but ma'am, fetch me a broom. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I declare. City living is spoiling the whole darn family. <laughs> I choose you. 
Let's see how Mr. Drysdale does with a scrub woman. Bring! <laughs> time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now. Here. This has been a Filmways presentation.